Are you just a unicorn or are you is that is that one of the my little ponies? I don't know. I I'm in a I am comfy is what I am. Okay. And I can I have I deserve can, what? Can I have your blood? No. Unicorn blood is the best for spells. Look, I deserve to be comfy. Okay. Because yesterday, actually technically Sunday, that went all the way into Wednesday, my hot water heater situation was a thing. You see, most of you aren't going to understand this. I don't care. The thermal expansion tank has a bladder, which serves Bro. as a diaphragm. And the diaphragm failed. So water got into the bladder and it rusted a hole into the tank. Oof. Yeah, I, I had to pretty much the, the, I had to to play around in the crawl space and with pipes and replace the thermal expansion tank. I had to replace the heater elements in the and the thermostat in the hot water heater. I had to put in some new pipes. I just. That sounds fun. It was not. It was, in fact, not fun. I did not have a fun time. I, I, I had a bad time. Is Tara's witch costume from something specific? No. Um, this is called what Tara could throw together last minute from night she has in her house because Tara's life has been a trash fire. Yes, because Dan comes home from hospital tomorrow, right? Tomorrow or Thursday. Okay, yeah. Just very excited. Miss him very much. Donnie's up there making a ruckus. Um, so, yes, uh, this is just shit I had laying around, including the yeah. feather shawl. And I had this, this is my comfy unicorn onesie. This is what we're doing. This is comfy Halloween. This has been a shit crash fire of a night year. The past few weeks have not been great. I realized last Monday live on air that we had to do this this week and that I had prepared nothing. So I was like, you know what? I'm a LARPer. I have a closet full of crazy shit. <laughs> Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs. Find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring back here for a listen. We like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? And like I said, it is not yet the Hollow Beans. Uh, no. And yet, that people are are persisting in Hollow Bean shenanigans. And come on, fucking! I have so many windows open. Uh, I have so many um uh fucking things tabs open this week because i have the news stories and the other shit so there's like and a super fun costume chrome, chrome is using like eight gigs of ram right now and they all hurt uh all right let's let's see here why aren't you uh, why who didn't op you in the channel damn it that's not right me no, you're not. Off. What the fuck? All right. Um, let's start with New Jersey. So, uh, I I felt a little sad that I haven't been able to um decorate for Halloween like I've wanted to in a long while. Um, and you know it it's it's kind of been an an issue getting the kids to come out because you know it, but we're finally back to a year where we might actually have trick-or-treaters again and one man in new jersey has a way to welcome them that is absolute bullshit come here i'm here up oh, there you go click and drag oh, no. you can do this new jersey homes confederate halloween display draws outrage they say confederate this isn't conf this shit this is not confederate Th this is not you're on the wrong side of the Mason Dixon for that one. Yeah, because I, I don't know if you know this, but New Jersey was not uh, 
was not on the side of the Confederacy. No. They were a little far away from that the whole uh whole situation. Yeah, they were they were union. Yeah. Pretty far north. So first of all, yeah, it's, this is how is where is this? Um a Halloween display on a New Jersey home's lawn is getting a lot of attention, but it's not for the scares it's giving. Anyone driving along busy Tom's River Road, rural township of Jackson in Ocean City, may do a double take when passing by one property in particular. Adorned with multiple no trespassing signs, the home boasts multiple Confederate flags, in addition to costume ghosts, one of which seems to resemble a haunting image of a Ku Klux Klan. Seems to resemble. Seems. It's just. It, you remember the old SNL skit, the Coneheads? It's like a Coneheads Halloween thing. He's just a really big Dan Aykroyd fan. Uh huh. Or a racist piece of shit. He he's he's a racist piece of shit. Let's 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 be honest here, because yeah, you got you're not you're not flying Confederate. It's not a coinky dink here. It always, it always fucking kills me when people in like New York and New Jersey are rocking Confederate flags. I always want to walk up and ask them if they're lost. Right? Did you did you get misdirected somewhere? Cause um <laughs> you in the wrong place. Yeah, you're 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 a couple thousand miles off. Maybe a thousand or so, but you're still a long way away. Yeah. And what what the living I mean, what the, the kids? The, 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 the kids. The Halloween is for kids, okay? Mainly yeah. for fucking kids, and this is what you're doing for the kids. You know, and even like why there are things. If you don't want kids to come to your house and ask for candy, just put out a sign that says "No candy." There are things I I deeply believe. That some might consider controversial. Some might, you know, have issues with, with it um, in the greater community. I understand that. But Halloween is for kids. So I'm not out yeah. there putting up, you know, fucking atheist goddamn signs on Halloween for the kids. The kids are coming for the fucking candy. I'm doing it for the kids. I'm not going to give this we bullshit. Even, like, Dan's an old goth and he keeps wanting to make our house like really fucking scary. And I'm like, we we average like 300 kids in this neighborhood for Halloween. And I'm like, yeah, but little tiny children, though. Like we can someday yeah, I'm go not. to Halloween at the goth club and do scary shit. But like we should not make kids afraid to approach the house for a Snickers. I'm not putting up signs that say stealing from work isn't really theft. You know, I'm not doing that shit. Yeah. Though I want to, but I'm not. You yeah, like just turn the lights off. I mean, in addition to just being the house with the Confederate flags, now you're the dick. You're the dick trying to fuck with kids. Yeah. I don't know why you even want to stay living in that neighborhood because no one else is going to want you there. And I don't understand. I don't understand people who get joy. This is going to be ironic given the show we're currently oh. doing. I don't understand people who get joy from harming people like i don't think we harm people i hope not no but like we don't from proactively harming people i don't i don't get that well speaking of harming people um and more halloween nonsense there are ways to go about your crime surreptitiously if if, if your intent is not to be apprehended by law enforcement there are quiet ways of criming. Yeah. And there's this motherfucker. Machete wielding clown arrested in Gulf. And if you're listening to this on the MP3, we're not talking about this, not insulting him. We're quite literally, it's, it's a fucking clown. Like an actual oh, hum, <laughs> clown. Um, police allege a drug deal gone bad ended in a machete wielding cloud dragging a man out of a business before riding off on his bicycle. That is a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Like there should be a Pulitzer <laughs> just for like <laughs> most incredible sentence constructed in news this year. Uh, What's the craziest shit you have had to make sound very serious? The bizarre scene unfolded around 2.30 a.m. on Friday morning when police were called to a business in the Willow and Dawson Roads area. Caller indicated a man wearing a clown mask and carrying a machete had dragged another man out of the business. Uh, The other man was able to break free and escape. Police say the clown's getaway attempt was fairly comical. He hopped on a bicycle and tried to ride off with the machete sticking out of his backpack. When he said the clown eventually realized realized he was being a tad conspicuous, tossed the machete. The Joker didn't get far. But did the Batmobile lose its wheel? Officers chased him down and made the arrest. Uh, investigation revealed the original interaction at the business was over drugs. Search of the masked man revealed fentanyl, drug paraphernalia, and a stolen credit card and driver's license. Like, if it's 2.30 in the morning. I don't know what it's like where you are, but in the suburbs here, 2.30 in the morning. Nobody's out. No, hardly. Yeah. There's like maybe five cars on the road. If we have like a lot of people with dogs, so you get random people walking their dogs because the dog has to pee. But but if something's going down, it's pretty obvious something's because there's nothing else to look at except you. If you're at like noon on a Tuesday, even in suburbia, there's a whole lot. There's like cars all over fucking places. You can maybe slip by. Last week, I was on my way home from visiting Dan at the hospital and I stopped at the Arby's drive through. (laughs) Okay, right in front of Arby's is a bus stop. And the drive through was taking a while because they were it was like nine o'clock at night. So they don't have anything pre-made. So, you know, I'm just sitting there waiting for my food. And there's this couple at the bus stop and they are having a fucking reality show fight. It starts with them yelling at each other. Then they're screaming at each other. Then she's chasing him down the block, swinging and throwing shit out of her bag. Then he's like in her face, holding her by the collar. And I'm like. What, what do I do? Because I don't like being that bitch that just calls the cops on people. Take out your phone and put that shit on TikTok. But I'm like, what That's do I That's what do? you do. And, and like, having been a teenage burger slinger, my immediate concern is, I know there's like three teenagers and one grown up in this inside this Arby's. Yeah. I don't want this to be their problem. So like when the kid comes to the window and the kid's like 15, I'm like, listen. <laughs> I just want to warn you what's going on. And I kind of filled him in and he was like, what? And he stuck his head out the window. He was like, oh shit. And I'm like, yeah. I was like, so I don't know if they're going to come inside. He's like, well, we just closed the lobby for the night. Like we're drive through only. I'm like, all right, good. So at least you're not, but you know, if you're going out to your car in an hour, like maybe make sure they're gone. Cause this is shit serious. Not the normal why thing did, you see. Why, why didn't you, 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 you should have put that shit on the TikToks. Yeah. <laughs> I was concerned because here's the other thing. The other reason I didn't want to call the cops is I had been out all day. I was tired. I had to pee. I had to feed my cats. I just wanted to like go home and eat my curly fries in peace <laughs> and not be sitting at the Arby's for two hours filling out a police report. Just put the shit on TikTok. It's the same thing. It's the same. But thing. then you get questions of like, why didn't you do something? Well, because I'm a shitty person and I wanted to go home and pee and eat curly fries. Let's put it on TikTok. Yeah. Um, next up, this is from your neck of the woods, Colorado. Colorado. <laughs> um, so you all have the hiking and the mountains and the great wide wilderness and the big open spaces. Um, and it can be a little dangerous out there sometimes people go missing and they get reported missing that's why i don't go outside one of the first things that but we have telecommunications everywhere so one of the first things they'll do if you go missing is they'll try to call you except now we have the cell phones 
that tell you who's calling. And we're used to having 20,000 phone calls about our car's warranty. We don't even have a car. And those all come from unknown caller. So guess what happens? Oh, no. Iker lost for 24 hours, ignored rescuer phone calls because didn't recognize the number. See, this is how I would die. <laughs> Uh, Lake County Search and Rescue found their efforts to locate a hiker lost on Mount Albert on Monday, October 18th, significantly hindered after the individual failed to respond to multiple calls. According to a statement, uh, the hiker had set off at 9 a.m., but had not returned by 8 p.m. After several attempts to contact him by phone, five Lake County Search and Rescue team members were deployed about 10 p.m. to search high probability areas. They failed to locate him, returned to the base camp at 3 a.m. the next day. Search team made up of three search and rescue members search at 7 a.m. Around 9.30 a.m., it was reported the man had, quote, returned to his place of lodging. The hiker told authorities they had lost the trail around nightfall and spent subsequent hours searching for it before finally reaching their car. They had no idea a search and rescue operation had been launched to locate them. One notable takeaway is that the subject ignored repeated phone calls from us because they didn't recognize the number. Like, fuck you, I don't have a car. I don't want a warranty. Stop Do you want to kill your battery on robocalls or somebody trying to sell? Because let me tell you out here, the Denver Post is fucking relentless. You want you want a newspaper subscription? Right. If the Denver Post gets your phone number, they will call you three times a day until you're dead. And then they'll call your next of kin. So, like, if you want to waste your battery on that when you don't know where you are. Hey, did you know your Amazon account has been hacked? Uh, we yeah. need we need to contact you, and we need there have been charges, and it's it's very important that you talk to us right now. And also, the IRS uh, needs yeah. you owe the IRS money, and we need you to pay them in Apple gift cards because that's a normal. Like thing. I kind of get it, but also you know. Well, I mean, this is the, robocallers are one of those things that effectively ruins a communication system it's like it, it we have to work around this corruption to the system yeah and i don't even how often do those things fucking did it really work enough is it profitable enough to just constantly how many times you can only hit people one time before they're like wait a second the day that dan was in surgery they were calling me with updates and I didn't pick up the first call because it came up as unknown number. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to keep the line open. Like if, and then if, I checked the voice and I'm like, well, fuck me. <laughs> if, if they sell you, um, one, Whoa. Oh, what? what was that? Come on, guys. If they Sorry. sell you one fake warranty, you're not going to, they're not going to sell you a second one. It's like, I'm yeah. on to y'all. Come on now. I'm going to try though. Speaking of getting lost, I almost feel bad for this motherfucker. Almost. Almost. Home invasion suspect who fled house gets lost in northern Michigan woods calls 911. Oh, honey. An intruder who a woman briefly thought was her husband was arrested after he called the police on himself. <laughs> According to troopers, the bizarre ideal began when they responded to a breaking and entering complaint. Homeowner reported she saw, was watching television in the living room. She saw a man enter the room. She thought it was her husband. She screamed when she realized it was not her husband quickly came downstairs and told the man to leave. Trooper searching the area located the suspect, 43-year-old Kevin William Ty from Williamsburg, in the backyard of his parents' home nearby. Trooper attempted to speak with Ty. He fled into the woods. K-19 was called in, was unable to locate him. Later that night, Ty called 911 to report he was lost. So, he's wandering around someone else's home. They call the cops. The cops like show up. And his idea of, I will evade the authorities 
by fleeing into the woodlands. Wait, I don't know shit about the woodlands. Who will help me? I will call the authorities. <laughs> uh, say, we got a report of somebody breaking into a house in that area and that ran in the woods. That wouldn't be you, would it? No. No. That was a different guy. No, I think I saw him. No, I think he went that way. I'm sorry, Simba. I didn't mean to kick you. I yeah. yeah that... I think he went, I think he went that way, dude. But can you take me home first? <laughs> My God, some people are should just know better than to attempt crime. It's while you see on TV shows all these elaborate criminal shit that looks like they know what the fuck they're doing. You know, in reality, they quite often they do not. They they like just once, don't you want to see an episode of Law and Order SVU where Olivia Benson is like planning out how she's gonna catch this mastermind and he just like totally eats shit off the curb ten feet in front of her car and calls an ambulance because he's twisted his ankle. Or he gets on TikTok and, and like be like, Hey, yeah. here's why I am I'm going to a party right now. You and like she's just sitting in the car, like <clears throat> really dunk dunk. <laughs> NBC, call me. Lesser, I will sell you that idea. Lesser Godilla says, I didn't see the burglar, but he sounded really handsome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I heard that guy was fucking hot, bro. <laughs> Like you're getting arrested. Why? Just <laughs> why are you just wandering into homes that are not your mom's house? Like what? What happened here? Somebody was fucking drunk and wandered in the wrong fucking house and got in trouble for it. And decided, mom, mom, did you redecorate? Mom, can you heat me up some meatloaf? Honey, I told you I'm not into role play. I just wander in the fucking woods in the middle of the night. They had to find his ass. You're very bad at crime. Speaking of someone else who's very bad at crime, this is from Georgia. Um, a couple of times now we've had to talk about the Pokemon shit. Has gotten fucking ridiculous. Still fucks me up. The Pokemon card. We have grown yeah. fucking men raiding the target to get the Pokemon cards. Well, this time, dude fucking raided the federal government for the Pokemon cards. And I don't think that's a link. It's probably bad. Let me fix that. There you go. There's a link. Georgia man got COVID relief loan and spent $57,000 of it on Pokemon card. Singular. Singular. One card. <clears throat> Man, That's it, two cars. Uh, Vinath Udamsin. Udam Udamsin Udamsin. That that's a name. Vinath Udam Udamsin Udamsin. I think I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. Was charged by criminal information on Tuesday with one count of wire fraud after the government said he lied about how many employees he had and revenue his business generated, uh, an ap application for an economic injury disaster loan, or EIDL. Now, here's the best part. There were two kind of loans that they were giving out in conjunction with the, uh, there was the PPP, the payroll one, that was a forgive loan. If you never paid that back, that's okay. Right. That's, that's how that worked. That was an emergency one to get people their paychecks, keep people employed. If the employer didn't pay that back, that was fine. Then there's this. And the catch on the economic industry, this injury disaster loan is you have to pay that back. That's not a forgive free loan. Um, funds are meant to be used as working capital or, uh, or for normal operating expenses, such as rent and utilities. Um, according to charges filed in the Southern district of Georgia, uh, Udamsin uh, submitted an application on July 20th on behalf of the business he said had been operating since 2018. 
Uh, the application said the business had 10 employees and gross revenue of $235,000 over 12 months. As a result, the prosecutor said the Small Business Administration awarded him $85,000 on August 4th. But five months later, Udamsin used a large chunk of the funds to buy a Pokemon card for $57,789. I love this next line. It wasn't clear in court fil filings which Pokemon card he was accused of purchasing, but certain rare and valuable Pokemon cards can sell for thousands of dollars. Would it be better if you knew? Would that make it better? <laughs> would that be? Would you? Would, would it be better if you knew which fucking card it was? And also, like, did this guy actually run a business? Like, did he fuck employees out of their salary for the Pokemon? Maybe. It doesn't. It doesn't say. Fifty grand for a what? The, a Pokemon card. One. Was he all right? See, I don't know. I don't know if he was going to like flip it or try. You know, or it's going to be worth more than that. Maybe. Or if he was just He's going cardboard. to. Yeah, I know. He's cardboard. I know. It's ridiculous. Uh, or if he was just going to put it up on a shelf and just be like, that's my Pokemon card that I stole from the government. Like, obviously, I am not opposed to collecting things. Mm -hmm. I have a whole bunch of Funkos. You know, if something legitimately makes you happy. And you can afford yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Go to town. Like, I know they're useless pieces of plastic, but they're like $10 useless pieces of plastic, and they make me happy. Yeah, if they were like, this Funko is $60,000, like, I really want the Alligator Loki Funko. It's on Amazon for 70 bucks, and I'm like, hmm. I don't think I want it 70 bucks. Right. You know, if, if I found out something, something I collected and I owned was suddenly worth like a couple thousand dollars, I'd be like, I'm going to sell that shit. Yeah, the, the thing is, like, I take them out of the boxes and I throw the boxes away. But still, it, if it's if the shit's rare enough, who the fuck knows? <laughs> like, I just I just like them. I like my little Bucky Barnes that looks like he just I, got punched in the face. I don't have enough sentimentality. Yeah, I mean, probably the only thing I would, but is my guitars, and they aren't worth shit because they're parts casters. So ain't nobody gonna want and pay money for them. But I don't really have any much sentimentality towards collectible stuff. I'm weird that way. If someone's like, "Whoa, this is worth two hundred thousand," because Sarah's gave me a couple. All right, no, Sarah would get pissed at me, but Sarah's giving me a couple of these beanie dragons, and I'm like, <laughs> if that fucker is worth fifty grand, I might just, you know, I I might just have Sarah yell at me about that. Though, if there was fifty grand involved. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Hey, Sarah. Okay. The the good news is we're paying off your student loans. The bad news. Oh, uh, all right. I think that would be a fair trade personally. Right. All right. Last one this week. Oh, for fuck's sake. Just, oh, I'm going to send you the picture first and then the story because the picture is kind of amazing. Everyone at home, you can enjoy it too. Um, here's the picture. It's uh, well, there you go. Now you can't really see it. Truck oh. goes through ice. Give you the story here <laughs> in Barry in Barron County in DWI, and the ice is in quotation points here, quotation marks. Um, Minneapolis, the last few days have brought colder temperatures to Minnesota and Wisconsin, including overnight lows at, at or below freezing. But in an incident overnight, has the Barron County Sheriff's Department asking, where do we begin with this one? The department shared an image of a truck in the water with an apparent ice fishing house behind it. <laughs> Not so much a thin ice warning as it was a no ice warning. <laughs> The image was posted to Facebook Saturday morning with the caption, the ice is not ready yet. <laughs> caption, Did ice fish on water? What? Did they try to ice fish on water? It's what it looks like, yes. 
that appears to be the situation. Yes. Um, uh, the, the photo indicates investigators say, uh, alcohol was a factor and it was the third incident involving operated while intoxicated that evening. So people are getting drunk all over that night on October 23rd. Why? What the fuck was happening then? If Jesus invites you ice fishing. <laughs> He's fucking with you. He's right. fucking with you. Don't just trust that there's ice because he can walk on it. Throw a pebble. Because <laughs> no, eternity gets boring, I imagine. I and have, humans are stupid. I have never been so drunk that I was impatient with the ice to freeze. Oh, yeah. oh fine. Fuck it. I got all night. I will go home. I was just like, bored. I don't even understand ice fishing to begin with. I don't understand the appeal of sitting out on a frozen lake that you have to drill a hole through and then freezing your ass off. Like, I don't get it. Okay. But if that makes you happy, great. The appeal is it's for people in unhappy marriages who do not understand how to properly communicate to hide in a shed and drink alcohol for hours. But, okay. I was in an unhappy marriage. And it wasn't so bad that I would have preferred sitting out in a shed in the fucking cold All right. on a lake. Yes, but how many men do you know who are completely incapable of communicating properly? Fair. And, and what, I mean, if you tell someone, if you tell your spouse, well, oh, sorry, honey, we got to go ice fishing today. It's the only day we can do it. It's the right temperature and the fish are, and, and you're going to sit in a frozen shack for hours. There must be a good reason for it, right? So it's plausible. Why else would you go sit in a frozen shack, could drink beers and not deal with, with your failing relationship is, is what it is. What? Hi, kitty. Awkward. Oh, just just pick one. Why not both? Oh, okay. We're gonna go up, up and down at the same time. Okay, go up, Daddy. Just go up. No. No. Well, you can't now because it was my idea. Yes. <laughs> the first thing we learned this week. Is that uh, you got ice is ready when the ice is ready, not when you want it to be. A watch lake never freezes. <laughs> We've learned that um, if if you try to steal money from the government, maybe do something a little more savvy, like some some Panama Papers bullshit. At least bought a Porsche. Right, do bought a Porsche. Like do some Panama Papers bullshit. Shuffle that around. Don't just be like. I'm getting a Pokemon card. This is a sound investment. It's a Pokemans, dude. We have learned that some people are just not good at crime. If 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 you're the kind of person with a sense of direction who gets lost in the woods, you're not going to be good at crime. I'm just telling you. Maybe I'm find another fear. career. And I would not flee into the woods because I don't like nature. Nature doesn't like us. That's something people don't don't take a lot of stock in and nature doesn't doesn't fucking like us um we have learned that uh telemarketers uh have ruined our phone system to the point that people are going to stay lost would rather stay lost in the woods just die and then answer the their phone mountain, then talk to a telemarketer seriously you know what i'll just die here <laughs> i mean yeah. Oh, oh, hi, Simba. Simba. Hi, Simba. Hey, Simba. We've learned Ooh. that uh, a way to be inconspicuous about crime is not to be wielding a machete while wearing a clown ma mask. That kind of thing tends to get really? the populace engaged. Sir, you're typing. Who is typing? Simba is on my keyboard currently. Cat is typing? How can this be? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, 
smile at the internet. Go away. That's the punishment for getting on my desk. And finally, we have learned Halloween is for kids, not for you to, to, to get up in people's faces about the, sh the shitty things you believe. Just try to not be a dick sometimes. Just try. It's not like you've... Do you, you might be good at it. You, if you just try not to be a dick, it might be something you excel at. It's probably not, but you never know until you try, right? Right. There, I'm going to try. 